being aware that I'm walking around and people recognize me as either Arab or Muslim that I was like, oh, okay, this is just something that I have to deal with for the rest of my life. People get to know you and like I said, they don't automatically think you're Arab or Palestinian and then they find out you're Palestinian and then it's like, oh, well, it just gets awkward. I don't know what it is. If I'm not being mistaken for, you know, being uh, Mexican or Cuban, I'm always having to explain, you know, where I'm originally from. Even though I was born and raised in Southfield, Michigan, I have to say, my family's Lebanese, even though I only have a U.S. passport. In class, if uh, we're talking about Arabs or if we're talking about Muslims in history or politics or whatever, you kind of like feel this, this, this like tension in the air and all the eyes start to turn at you like waiting for you to say something. I will ask students, I'll do an exercise with them. So if I say three words like Arab, woman, um, Muslim, like what are the first things that come to your mind? And they'll say things like oppressed, backward, veil. Everything about my identity is inherently politicized. Um, being a woman, um, being Arab and being Muslim, like those are three very complex identities. One time we were at the airport, my dad, yeah, he has a very Arab sounding name. And in addition to that, he's way darker than I am. So instantly, you know, people were a bit more on alert. And it was kind of especially interesting because, you know, we're both Arab, we're both from Syria. We're, he's literally my dad, you know, the same family. But just like that instant, you know, they felt threatened by him, even though me and him were practically the same person. A driver, it's like four or five months ago, uh, like, when I was talking about that, that I came here and I love writing and as an Arab, you're not in the right place. That's what I understand from the way he was talking to me. If, if I'm an Arab, I don't have the right to say my, my, what I think about. In 1987, um, I was four at the time and federal agents came into my house and arrested my uncle. That was like the first moment where I knew that being Palestinian specifically and Arab probably more um, I guess, broadly speaking, meant something different. On the one hand, I'm Arab um, and Muslim, and on the other hand, I'm also American. So sometimes balancing those two sides gets difficult. And um, I think you reach a point in your life where you find that balance and you become proud of that balance. I remember this happened to me actually a couple weeks ago. I was in Westwood and we were driving. We needed to park somewhere. And uh, we asked this one lady who was stopped, she had her car lights on, like, she was gonna reverse out essentially and while she was reversing like she let us take her spot and then she drove up right next to us and she looked at us and she was like by the way i just want to say i am so sorry for trump like i'm so sorry but i was like oh that's that's cute like that doesn't really happen often arabs and muslims we don't hate all white people just because y'all have trump like <laughs> People go to the media because they feel like, or they kind of absorb what the media has to say because they don't always have a peer from that background to talk with. And it's just kind of like, have an open mind, listen to listen, don't listen to change someone else's point of view. People are told to be expressive and be themselves. And at the same time, they're being persecuted for that in the sense that normal, it should be, being yourself should be normal. And I think that's what we should strive for.